Arriving in El Hierro is amazing. It's just such an awesome island. We were really excited and thought that this would definitely be a place we could spend a lot of time. Got this incredible kind of lava landscape that finishes in the ocean. And it's left behind these beautiful boulders and you can just explore along the coast right from the marina in La Restinga. Our friend Sam, who we met in Apnea Canarias, took us on a tour of the island. Within 10 minutes, you can be up near the woods. The trees watching over all the others. Mm -hmm. So this is the grandmother. It's a totally different climate up in the forest. It's much cooler, the air is beautiful, and to see trees like this in the Canaries is something really special. We then drove over to have a look at the other side of the island. This is a view down to Frontera, or El Golfo, which is where Sam was staying. It's a small kind of collection of villages, I guess, built in the crater of a volcano. The rest of the crater extends underwater out into the ocean. There are some fantastically beautiful coast path walks as well. Beautiful sunset. It was really nice to catch up with Sam, he's a, a wonderful energy. But it wasn't long before we realised El Hero wasn't quite as perfect as we thought it was. Sadly, freediving isn't allowed in the marine reserve unless you're with an authorised guide. And that didn't really suit us because we have our own boat and we love to just go freediving uh, off, our, off our own backs. Also, it seems that the marine reserve was primarily set up for the artisanal tuna fishery. And so, you know, most days they were bringing in these huge tuna, which, which to be honest, like we, we found it quite sad. And I, I don't think we were alone. There were a few, few people crying in this crowd and, and, and some people with the opposite reaction of, uh, of uh, feeling like they, they've won over this big tuna, you know. But to me, it was an incredible fish. I've never seen anything the size of this before. And it was very sad to see it, uh, yeah, to just not see it alive in the ocean. But having said that, this is apparently a very sustainable fishery. And that's partly why the marine reserve has been set up, is to protect this small fishery rather than the big factory ships that are out there scooping up all the fish. Um, but for us, we are vegan. We get by just fine without eating any fish. So it just seemed wrong. There we go. Anyway, we live on a sailing boat, so we just thought, well, let's just go back to La Gomera where we can, you know, we can live on anchor. And yeah, it's just a short sail, six hours of sailing back to La Gomera. And it wasn't long before we were anchored in the bay again and, and uh, ready, to, ready to go freediving. When we're sailing along, we often find ghost fishing nets and we always try and remove any plastic and nets that we can so that they aren't a hazard to marine life anymore. On this particular free dive, there were loads of parrotfish. It was so nice to see them. They've got such smiley faces. Um, just so many of them. Beautiful, colourful fish. We discovered this wonderful double through cave, which was, there was sort of an archway you could swim through and then you could continue through another archway. It was really spectacular uh, as a little freediving spot. So we're excited to spend some time here. The parrotfish are real characters. They actually make all sorts of noises, pops and clicks, and if you listen carefully, you can hear them. There's a reef that's just uh, next to where we anchored the boat and it's pretty amazing. It's got these big kind of like holes in it um, that you can kind of stick your head in and you can see light through and it kind of emerges out from underneath this big kind of 
ledge and when we went swimming there the other day we saw a big gathering of rays, stingrays and there was about, I don't know, 10 or so all piled up in this hole like one on top of each other um, underneath this big ledge. So we're going to go and see if they're there today. Near where we're anchored there's often uh, a sandy bottom and it, it, at first it doesn't look like there's much life but when you get down there there's these amazing little garden eels. They're so cute. And when the weather's good we get offshore as often as possible. Um, within just about an hour of sailing you can be in one kilometre deep water and that's where these long finned pilot whales love to hang out. This footage is taken with a GoPro on the end of a pole and this is about an hour's worth of footage and all I got was these few little clips but they are spectacular to spend time with it. Just it's amazing to see these fellow breathers and freedivers underwater. They're called the cheetahs of the ocean because they actually swim really fast, unlike many whales, down to the, down to the depths. You can see this last one here taking an extra breath and then catching up with the others. And down they go, 1,000 metres on one breath. So, I'm just going into the toilet, the heads as we call it, in the boat, to see what is happening in here. What's going on, Tom? dreaded uh, toilet well, problems. <laughs> yeah, despite replacing the, the toilet with a brand new one, we've, uh, we've got our first problems. Not done too badly. Eight months of trouble-free pooing. pumping and pooing. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going and, uh, on? The handle's stuck up. It won't go down. We can't get the bowl to empty. Oh dear. That's uh, not nice. Luckily it didn't have anything nasty in there. <laughs> yeah, luckily it's uh, blocked up. It's a relatively clean moment. Yeah, so um, yeah, but we're moving as well, so it doesn't really want to. I know, I feel a bit seasick. <laughs> mm. Getting up close and personal with the Jabsco toilet. Nice. Progress, yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, We've dismantled things, there's smelly water coming out on the floor. We've got a very dirty valve thing in the bucket that needs a good clean. So um, I've got my gloves on. Yes, you put the one of me in snoring, so we're getting it. Naked cleaning the toilet is different to snoring. The snoring is I don't think cute. I was recording anyway, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not going in, I can tell you that much. <laughs> Really? It's the end of the outtakes. <laughs> it's like, I, I can't move my arm. Like, let me carry on. <laughs> Go on then, I'll just film the knob. Let's just look at this, this disgusting job. <laughs> We've also been quite busy with some really fun work projects. Uh, Lou has been writing a column for Oceanographic magazine in issue 18. It's all about Hope Spot and the pilot whales. We've featured as a guest blog on the Finisterre broadcast, uh, all about sailing lightly, and, that, and that's been really for their fantastic company. I recommend you go check them out. They do some great clothes. I've had a couple of, of live magic gigs at a local piano bar in, in uh, La Gomera and also done a couple of online Zoom shows. And lastly, our friends Ant and Libby have rescued our camper van out of storage and done a fantastic job at, at, at uh, renovating it again and getting it ready to hire out. And it's now available to hire through Quirky Campers 
online in Pembrokeshire, so you can go and pick up our van and go on an adventure if you fancy it. Shark. Really cruising along that one. That one's going for it, isn't it? Yeah. It looks like there's another one actually, just in front of it. So it turns out these were hammerhead sharks and there wasn't just one or two, there was actually about 20 of them swimming around in this bay. And so I put my wetsuit on and decided to get in there for a swim with them. We're not on the menu of hammerhead sharks, they eat small fish, but nevertheless my heartbeat was going to be honest, especially as I saw the boat pulling away. But I was absolutely overjoyed to get a small glimpse of this incredible creature underwater, just as just a, uh, Literally, this was the only footage I got within about an hour and a half of, uh, of, in, of being in the water. Mostly they were very, very shy and they didn't want to come too close to me. Agomera also has some incredible geological features and this one is the finest. It's called Los Organos and it's in the middle of nowhere but it, it, it's this incredible kind of like, it looks like organ pipes I guess is why it gets its name. And the water's just a stunning blue, Lou's hopped in for a swim off the side of the boat here. Uh, not far from where we saw the sharks actually so she's brave too. We had a sort of evening glass off as we, as we motored back towards where we, was, where we were staying in Valley Grand Ray and the sheer waters gather offshore there just before sunset, ready to come into the cliffs at night. And so we lingered a little bit too long and ended up sailing into the anchorage in the dark. But that meant we could hear the sheer waters. The next day the weather was still absolutely amazing so we decided to do something which has been on my bucket list for a really long time and that's to do a free dive out in really deep water. So we checked the kit, sailed out for about an hour to about 1,400 metres of depth and of course we dropped the mainsail, you can see that our mainsail's packed away and then we, yeah, we got our kit ready. So essentially we have got a line here, yellow line attached to the back of the boat and then the free diving rope and equipment. And I'll speed it up because it's, uh, yeah, essentially you just unpack a bunch of rope. Um, I think I set it to 20 meters to start with, it's marked. And then you squeeze this blue thing, it's called an octopus. Um, you squeeze that and that allows the rope, the weight to sort of drop the rope down to the, to the, uh, to the depth that you want it at. Um, so, you know, essentially we're, we're tied onto the boat, but we're not anchored, obviously. It's 1,400 metres deep, so we're just drifting, but there's literally no wind and just incredible water. An obvious safety feature you have to have is a lanyard. So, uh, yeah, we would clip on, take turns to do each other's safety. And it was just glorious. Here's a short video of Lou going down for her first, uh, first proper dive after the warm-up. You can see here that Lou's stopped doing anything really, she's just free falling below about 10 meters. Um, it means you don't need to do any swimming but you're still sinking down and it's, it's, it's like being, it's the closest I think you can be to being a superhero. You're dressed in rubber and you're basically just floating down, it's, it's, it's like flying, it's an incredible feeling.
the most important thing really about freediving is being able to relax beforehand. So you spend a good couple of minutes just lying there like a jellyfish before taking one really nice deep full breath and then heading on down. So here I am on my way back up again, having been down to around about 30 meters. That was as deep as we decided to go this day. It was a long way from personal best, but that we decided to keep it, uh, keep it easy for this day because we were way offshore. We were having a lot of fun and just when uh, you think you're getting the hang of it, then one of these guys turns up and shows you how it's really done. This is a green turtle and must have heard us free diving because he, he sort of came cruising over and was very very relaxed he actually had a couple of little crabs living on his back and fish as well I don't know if you can see them but he was really beautiful it looked like a wise old green turtle he'd seen a lot in his time I really hope you enjoyed uh, coming along with us on some of our adventures if you would like to, it would be great if you could hit the subscribe button and the like button. And you can also become a patron and support us to make these videos. Um, you can just visit this website here and we'll send you out some really nice goodies and add you to a special patron group and you get special content as well if you join. So thanks again for watching. Hit the like, hit the subscribe and we'll see you next time.